Good morning, Dr. Azana. Now, we are group 6 from section 2. We are represent experiment data for major pipe losses. First, abstract. So, um, uh, the purpose of the experiment is to determine pipe friction factors and resistance coefficient. This is to show how the friction factor varies with random number by manipulating the flow rate of the fluid in a pipe. The major head loss using binary equation could be determined experimentally without minor loss encountered. Uh, for the objective to determine pipe friction factors and resistance coefficient and compare the coefficient of friction for each experiment, which are we have five experiments totally with the coefficient of friction from Moody chart. For introduction, when a fluid flows through a pipe, some resistance occurs due to the loss of some of the fluid's energy. Major losses are correlated with the loss of original energy caused by the viscous effects of the medium and the pipe wall's roughness. The flow resistance in a pipe is a function of the length of the pipe, the uh, pipe diameter, main, uh, the mean velocity and the fluid properties and the roughness of the pipe. Is it turbulent flow but it is independent of the water flowing under pressure. I will continue the presentation of the general interbulent flow between two points for the horizontal pipe, which has constant internal diameter with no minor head loss encountered, whereby the total head loss is equal to major head loss, the pressure loss, and major head loss in the Bernoulli equation could be determined experimentally as follows. Pressure is equal to FL multiplied by rho multiplied by square of the speed divided by 2 times the internal diameter numeric pressure. For the major head loss is equal to coefficient of pipe friction multiply by length, then multiply by square of the speed of following medium, divided by internal diameter, multiply by 2 times by gravity constant, and you will get major loss. For the turbulent pipe flow, the pipe friction coefficient depends on the equivalent pipe roughness and the Reynolds method. An example of the equivalent roughness is on type of pipe I listed in the one. This is the table which represents the equivalent roughness for the pipe. And this is the Moody chart. And here, Reynolds number can be calculated using the data of internal diameter, kinematic viscosity of flowing medium, and it's as follows. Bernard number is equal to speed of flowing medium times by internal diameter and divided by kinematic viscosity. Uh, this table is showing the kinematic viscosity of water as the function of for example, at temperature 10, the kinematic viscosity is equal to 1.307 times by 10 to 6 unit of meter square per second. The speed of flowing medium B can be calculated using the data of the internal cross section area, flow rate, and it is as follows. Speed is equal to 4 times by flow rate of flowing medium divided by pi multiplied by the internal diameter power of 2. For the turbulent flow in smooth pipe, the F for the Blasius formula valid for Reynolds number is lower than 10 to the power of 5 can be calculated 
using this equation. Meanwhile, for the color formula, the F, which is the friction in turbulent flow, can be calculated using this formula. This equation is an implicit formula that has to be iteratively resolved. First of all, estimate the value of F. Place it in the formula, this formula and calculate the initial approximation. This approximation is reduced in the equation to calculate the second approximation. If the estimated value is taken from the Google chart, the initial approximation is generally sufficiently accurate and the value only differ after the third estimation. The friction in turbulent flow also could be determined using a body formula, which is equation number 7. Alternatively, the value f can directly be obtained using a Google chart. Next is methodology. First, both of the feeding and return force is connected to the tested part section. Next, the manometer tube at one of the two tube manometer, which is the edge inlet and outlet, is connected to the tested pipe section. Third, the main switch and the pump is turned on. The gap valve is slowly open until the reading of the manometer or actual flow rate reach two cubic meter per hatch. Next, the ventilation valve, which is the black one, was opened by turning it in a clockwise direction to release all the bubbles in the system. Next, the gate valve is closed and the pump is turned on. The ventilation valve, which is the white on the top of the two tube manometer, is slowly opened until preset minimum reading of two tube manometer. Next, the gap valve is slowly open until the level of water at the tube manometer of H1 reach the maximum while the H2 is at the minimum. The two tube manometer of H1 and H2, temperature and QX at photometer is recorded. The QX reduced to 5 different values by adjusting or reducing the opening of the gate valve. All the reading will be recorded. Next, the manometer tube and the two tube manometer is transferred to the differential pressure sensor, which is the P1 inlet and P2 outlet. The reading of differential pressure sensor and the digital display for pressure is prior to be recorded for five different values. Next, if there is no bubble present, the ventilation valve is closed and the QX, the pressure and the differential pressure reading is recorded. Next, all the manometer tube is removed from the system. The gap valve is closed and the pump is turned off before changing the feeding and return force to another pipe section. Step two to nine is repeated. Lastly, after finish, all the manometer tube is removed from the system. The gate valve is closed and the pump and the hand switch is turned So this is the results for a pipe galvanizer at temperature 30 Celsius. And next is the pipe copper with dimensions 18 mm times 1 mm at temperature 32 Celsius. And next will be the PVC pipe with dimension 16 mm x 18 mm at temperature 34.5 Celsius. And this one is the PVC pipe with dimension 20 mm x 1.5 mm at temperature 33 Celsius. And last will be the PVC pipe with dimension 32 mm x 1.9 mm at temperature 35 Celsius. So for discussions, our first discussion is to compare the coefficient of friction for each of the test pipe in experiment with the coefficient of friction from Moody chart 
and calculation using a formula of Blasim's Cobra and Moody. The possible reasons for the difference in their values are as planned. So the first pipe, which is the pipe galvanizers, the coefficient of friction that we calculate by using the Moody chart is 0.0441, while by using the Cobra formula, the result that we get is 0.0442. Blasian formula is 0.0298, and the Moody formula is 0.0068. And next is the pipe copper with dimensions 80 mm x 1 mm at temperature 32 Celsius. So from Moody charts, we can get the F values of 0.0256, and the Cobra formula has the same value also, which is also 0.0. 256. Blasius formula is 0.0260 and the Moody formula is 0.0050. PVC pipe with dimension 60 mm x 80 mm at temperature 35.5 Celsius. So the Moody chart is 0.0301. Cooper formula is also 0.0301. While the Blasius formula is 0.0306. And the last Moody formula is 0.0019. And next is the PVC pipe with dimension 20 mm x 1.5 mm. The coefficient of friction that we get from the Moody chart is 0.0234. And the Kruppel formula has the same values, which is also 0.0234. While the Blasio formula is 0.0235. And Moody formula is 0.0044. And last is the PVC pipe with dimension 32 mm x 1.9 mm. From Moody charts, the coefficient of friction is 0.0246, same as the Cobra formula. While for the plastic formulas, the F value is 0.0250, and the Moody formula is 0.0047. So by comparing the results of PEMS, we can see that there are some differences between the experimental F values and the theoretical F values. The differences may be due to the errors when conducting the experiments and other possible reasons. The results obtained using module formula are quite different compared with the results obtained using other formula. This is because Moody stated the accuracy is about plus minus 5% for smooth pipes and plus minus 10% for rough pipes. The reasons why the results obtained using plastic formula and other formulas have slightly discrepancy might be because of the Blasius correlations does not emphasize the pipe roundness and it is valid for both smooth pipes and rough pipes. Next is the friction coefficient obtained using the formula of Klobok and Moody are the same. And this is because both of the formula accuracy is for smooth and rough pipes. So overall, we can say that due to the several differences in variables and calculations, Therefore, the resulting values vary with the formula used. The next discussion is to rank the pipe in ascending trend based on their major head loss value obtained from the experiments. So, based on the calculations, we found that the head loss of the galvanizer steel pipe is 0.1540 and the copper pipe is 0 0.1377. PVC pipe with dimension 20 mm x 1.5 mm is 0.0325. PVC pipe with dimension 60 mm x 1.8 mm is 0.5555. And the PVC pipes with, the trend, with 33 mm x 1.9 mm is 0.0265. So the pipe ranking based on the head loss in ascending on order, the first will be the PVC pipe with dimension 32 mm x 1.9 mm. Second will be the PVC pipe with dimension 20 mm x 1.5 mm. Third will be the copper pipe. And fourth will be the galvanizer steel pipe. Last will be the PVC pipe with 60 mm x 1.8 mm. So based on the results of tens, PVC pipe with the dimension of 32 mm x 1.9 mm give the least head loss compared to other pipes. And this is because PVC pipe with the dimension of 32 mm x 1.9 mm has the largest inner diameter size, which is 30.5 mm. 
and the least relative roundness, which is 0 0.00005. Thus, the results in the smallest coefficient friction value and contribute to the least head loss value. And since the head loss is directly proportional to the value of coefficient of friction and is inversely proportional to the diameter size of the pipe, hence PVC pipe with dimension 32 mm and 1.9 mm at its width the lowest head loss and PVC pipe with dimension of 60 mm and 1.8 mm exhibits the highest head loss. The third discussion is the factors contributing to errors or inaccuracy in experimental data and the possible recommendations to improve the accident's result. So, there are three factors that contribute to the errors. The first one is the presence of air bubbles in the manometer tube and the pipe, which would directly cause the reading to be inaccurate in a very significant conditions. And the second will be the unstable flow rate, which has caused the reading of height fluctuated in the manometer. And next will be the parallax error caused by the eye level is not perpendicular to the skew reading at the manometer when taking the readings. So the recommendations to improve the results is to make sure there is no presence of air bubbles by flowing the water in pipe and secure the tightness of all interface before taking the readings. Second will be the parallax error can be minimized by viewing the reading at eye level and at the meniscus which means that the observer eye level must be perpendicular to the skill that needs to be read. And third one will be to repeat the experiment a few times to get more than one measurements for each readings and find their average. Hi guys, and I will explain about conclusion and recommendation for this experiment. So as a conclusion, the flow in pipe system is affected by major head loss so what is major heat loss? Major heat loss is uh, the energy loss due to friction per length of the pipe. So this uh, energy loss is ma uh, major loss uh, is affected by velocity, uh, flow velocity, pipe length, pipe diameter and also friction factor. So in conclusion, the flow in pipe system is directly affected by flow velocity, pipe length, pipe diameter and also friction factor. So uh, the calculation was made based on the equation 1 to 6 given in the theory and then based on the uh, based on the values we get from results we get from experiment we will use equation 4 to 6 uh, to to get uh, much, uh, other variables that we cannot uh, get it from the experiment so these uh, equation 4 to 6 are Blasius formula, Coolbrook formula and Moody formula and we also have Moody chart. So what is Moody chart? Moody chart is uh, it has four variables, which is uh, internal diameter of pipe, Reynolds number, which we use to determine the type of flow, whether it's laminar or turbulent. And then we have the coefficient of pipe friction, and then we have the equivalent roughness. So uh, we can find either of the four um, variables if we need to using the Moody chart. So, however, this experiment involves some errors which may affect the accuracy of the result. So, we have to uh, we have to take some recommendation or precautionary steps uh, in order to get a more accurate result. So, first, we must ensure that the hoses are connected properly. So, basically, when they are not connected properly, there may be a leakage, so leakage usually causes the pressure of the flowing fluid to drop. And then we also have uh, have to release the air trapped in the manometers as bubbles, so they may uh, affect our readings and may cause fluctuations. And then we have to prevent parallax, parallax error. So it is very simple to prevent parallax error. You just make sure that your eye is uh, perpendicular to the uh, reading level and then last but not least in order to get a more accurate result the measurement should be repeated at least three times and the variance from the theoretical result would be minimized by it so basically you have to repeat the experiment and get the uh, accurate results three times so let's say if one of the uh, set of 
results have been uh, are not accurate so the other two will be accurate so this makes the when we find the average this will make the theoretical result uh, the variance of the theoretical result will minimize due to the uh, due to this method lah. so that's all for recommendation and this is this is our reference so that's all thank you